Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals. So back in the 80s, I was a little young for Masters of the Universe. I was born in 1984, so I kind of missed out on like the, you know, the first couple years of He-Man. And, you know, I was kind of like between one and three during like, you know, the rest of its heyday. But I still had He-Man. I had Skeletor. I actually lost my He-Man in an elevator in the, uh, Ho Mercy Hospital in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. So if you found that way back somewhere between 1986 and, you know, 1991, please send me a message. And, uh, you know, I, I'd like to get that back. But, uh, you know, I also had some of the cool later things like Spydor and I think it was called Manasaur. You know, just a bunch of really awesome things. And it was a really cool line back in the day, right? And, you know, even though I didn't have a lot of Masters of the Universe because I was busy get buying Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters and whatnot, uh, it didn't matter because... You would go over people's houses and everybody had a ton of Masters of the Universe toys. So it didn't matter if it was a boy or a girl. You'd go over their house and they'd have, you know, Merman, Man at Arms, Castle Grey Skull, the Snake Man, you know, everything you missed out on. But there was always one figure that, like, I was always really jealous, like, man, I wish I had that guy. And that guy was Trapjaw. When I saw that they were releasing Trapjaw in this new Masters of the Universe Origins line, I thought, yes. I want that and I need that. That thing's awesome looking, you know? This guy looks like an awesome upgrade of the original Trapjaw toy. And, you know, at first I didn't want to get a bunch of these Masters of the Universe Origins toys because as an adult now I have a decently sized um, Masters of the Universe retro collection. But I figured I definitely want to get Trapjaw and I want to get some of the other figures that, you know, are too pricey now. Like Scareglow, I want to get him, I want to get uh, Clamp Champ, I think is his name. You know, some other ones. But so I was like, yeah, I'm just going to get like, you know, you know, maybe three, maybe four of them. But then I bought Skeletor and then I bought He-Man and then I bought Battle Cat and then I bought pretty much everything I could find. And now I've got a problem. Just got to find three more. Now, like I said, I don't really know, remember too much about like the packaging of the old He-Man toys, but I do appreciate what they're trying to do here. I do appreciate that they're trying to give it that old classic look of the 80s toys, you know. And I ordered this from Walmart.com. It was like one of those deals where um, it went up for sale at just like a random time during the day. And I was able to just randomly checking Walmart.com. I eventually found it. And on the back here, you have Heroic Warriors, the Evil Warriors. You have this nice little, um, you know, display of how you're supposed to use his action figures. You could plug his laser gun, hook pinchers into arm, open and close jaw for biting action. And, uh, you know, I think since because I got it from Walmart.com, it came unpunched at the top. Not that it matters, because I'm going to pop this guy open. And, you know, the artwork here is pretty awesome. I'm bending it now, but when I got this in the mail, like, they did, like, shove this in a box. And the top was rolled. And, like I said, because I'm opening it, I really don't care. Now, this is something I never really see a lot of people posting about, but... I am, uh, I do collect most of my stuff loose, but I do like keeping the cards because I like the artwork. I like the, usually like the artwork on the front and I usually like to keep the back somewhat intact. So I usually just take an X-Acto knife and I did like start to open this and I was like, nah, I won't open it that way. But I'll just like cut along the inside of the bubble so that, you know, you can get this off of here and you have, even though you have this little piece of plastic left, sometimes it's not always the easiest thing. Exacto knives are dangerous too. You chop the crap out of your fingers. I think I cut the comic book in there, but oh well, I don't care. Every single one of these comic books comes with every single other figure from Wave 2, so it doesn't really matter if I damage one of them. It's not like I need four of them in pristine condition. <laughs> oh my god. Now I'm doing it. Okay, so... <laughs> well, I tried. So, instead of just, you know, ripping the crap out of the whole thing, I just got a couple of white areas. I'm okay with that. Whatever. So inside you got this cool... Masters of the Universe, Double Trouble comic book. Let's see if I can focus a little bit. It's like, it seems really dark. Neat little comic book inside. 
I like, you know, and like I said, for people who missed out on Scare Glow, this line is essential because, you know, would you rather pay $300 for a complete Scare Glow or would you rather pay 15 bucks at Walmart or soon to be every other store? And there he is. Here's Trapjaw in all of his glory, and he's ready for some hooking. I think this is awesome, you know, I think it's great that they're able to take the original um, design of those old figures and, you know, just add some articulation and make them like a brand new awesome figure for you to have on your shelf. His, uh, his head is like a ball jointed head. You can rotate it up and down and you can spin it all the way around. Um, his jaw does open and close. So if you want, you can pretend he's talking to your guys. His shoulder here uh, has a hinge and has a swivel joint, so you can rotate all the way around. His elbow is a swivel. You can rotate that all the way around. It's got a hinge in there. I like the added paint here on this little uh, elbow pad. You can rotate his hand all the way around, and he has a hinge there too. I can't tell if you're supposed to be able to... Like, if this, there's some kind of small hinge inside this arm. Like, sometimes it feels like I'm rotating it a little bit this way. But I could just be making that up. He can rotate all the way around this direction. Uh, now, there's a hinge inside of here that you can rotate it all the way around here. And you see that middle part there is connected to the peg that's inside there. And these two outside pieces are connected to the, the forearm. So... You can rotate that, but it seems like you have to be very careful in order not to break that pe peg in there. Um, of course, his hand can rotate all the way ar around, and you can just pull that out to put the new weapon inside. There's no articulation in his upper torso, but his waist swivels around. His uh, hip joints here can rotate this direction. They can rotate front and back a little bit, but it's a little stiff. His knee joints have a hinge, and you can rotate them around. And he also has a boot cut, so you can rotate the bottom of his foot around. And finally, his, uh, getting dark here. Black toys and a black background. Not the smartest. <laughs> you can rotate his, uh, his ankle up and down, and he has a boot, or I'm sorry, a ankle rocker, so you can rotate that around. So you can get him into nice, a lot of nice poses. It's pretty good. And uh, his belt is nice and tight. The original one is very loose, so this one, you know, it's really tight on his body. Um, the holes in here are very tight. The pegs for these weapons fit in really nicely and don't... Um, like, on my original trap jaw, like, the, the stuff falls out all the time. But these do not fall out. These are very sturdy. They're very uh, grippy. <laughs> you know? um, I, so much so that it's actually kind of hard sometimes to get, like... I was having trouble with this gun, and I started bending the peg, and I was a, a little worried about that. But, you know, you just gotta try to get it in there the right direction, and you're good to go. And, you know, you just pull this off here. You could pull off whichever piece... You put that in there. And he's ready to fire on He-Man and the heroic warriors. Also kind of like, you know, you could pretend that like, this is like, you know, he's pointing out like this at the guys. Or if you want to, you could pretend that he's just kind of like, this is just like something I was playing around with yesterday. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. Because it's just kind of funny. Like if it was like a shoulder cannon or something like that, and he could be running after the guys while firing at the same time. So he wouldn't have to like, you know, point it straight. This way it might be a little more sturdy for him in real life. One of my favorite things about this figure, compared to all the other Masters of the Universe figures that I've gotten from this Origins line, is this knee. You know, I think that this knee looks a lot nicer. The I like that the flap because it's like a boot, it actually covers up the front and it looks normal. It looks natural. 
One of my biggest problems with these Origins figures is that weird knee flap that they have. Like, the female figures look weird. So strange. Even, uh... Even He-Man here. It looks weird. I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it look like it's, like, you know, flush. But it just comes off a little goofy. In my opinion. But if you have a character like Trapjaw who has these boots that go above the knee, it works out just fine. It, it, it's a very nice uh, cut or whatever. When it comes to Trapjaw's weapons, these are very similar. Except, uh, there's no, I guess there's no hook on the original one. This is the old one, this is the new one. The old one's a little thinner, it's not as you know, bulbous. The older one of these is a lot wider than this new one. This one's a lot flatter. It's like if you look at the profile, it looks the same, but on top it's a lot different. Here are the two guns next to each other. Also very similar, although the new one's a little bigger. Now here's a quick look at Trapjaw through the ages. Now, as you can see, the original toy I think was really cool because even though he was, you know, even though these toys were like, I don't know if you want to call them primitive compared to toys nowadays, they're still like so very well detailed. Like there's a lot of extra detail and stuff put into this. The only primitive part about him really is the articulation. Um, you know, the legs, I think, on this Trapjaw figure are bad. Not as bad as Beastman's, but still bad. Because most of the times when you're trying to get him to stand up, you kind of have to, like, tilt his upper body forward. And it kind of looks makes it look like he's, like, crouched over. Just to try to get him to balance enough to stay upward. And, um... You know, I think that's the biggest plus of these new toys from Mattel. I mean, look at him. He's standing straight up. He's imposing. Uh, you can probably get a lot of really nice, um, uh, what do you call them, dynamic poses out of here, you know. Even this uh, Filmation Super 7 figure, you know, because he has those limited legs, you can only really only standing, stand him up in these, this position, and that's it. But this new trap jaw your, you know, what you can do with them is unlimited. Well, maybe not unlimited, but it, it's grown. <laughs> if you look at the backs here, let's see if I can get him to stay upright. He will fall. See that? Like, why are you doing that, Trapjaw? I think that also, like, you know, the original Trapjaw's belt is not, like, the most imposing looking belt. It just kind of looks like a piece of plastic wrapped around him. And it still kind of looks like that, but I think it looks a lot better. This old one's a lot looser. The weapons fall out a lot, where the new one, the weapons kind of stay in nice and sturdy. The Filmation one, I think his belt looks more like it's a real belt because, I, I don't know, maybe because of the way it's shaped. It's not as cartoony looking, even though it is a cartoon figure. Go figure with that. <laughs> but, you know, they do such a really nice job of copying the details bringing it into the new era but you know improving upon it not on sculpts but just on um articulation so in my opinion the new trap jaw looks more menacing than the original one because the eyes look at his eyes they're completely black and you have these little white dots in them he looks almost demonic next to the original trap jaw the original trap jaw looks cool and imposing but he looks a lot more like manic he looks like uh, maybe he's a little coked out or something. He's all, his eyes are completely wide like, Oh, He-Man, where, where is he? I gotta find him. I gotta find him. Where is he at? You know, <laughs> where this, this trap jaw looks more like, He-Man, when I find you, I'm going to eat the flesh off your bones. I'm going to rip off your arms and send them to your father for Christmas. <laughs> you know, like, he's, he's, uh, he looks a little scary, you know? I kind of do like the original darker colors of these toys, but, you know, what can you do? still like it. One big difference here 
is that this little uh, chest piece here is actually sculpted onto the new trap jaw. On the original one, this piece is removable. You could actually pop this arm off and take that out. It's a separate piece. But that is not a possibility with this guy. All right, so enough gushing. Let's get to some negative things here. All right. Okay, first negative problem I have. I like how the original face is a lot sharper and, you know, crisper looking. Even though I, I kind of like the eyes on this guy a little more, just because it makes him look more evil. I kind of like how the old one was a little crisp. Um, this one is very soft. Next. Um, some of this paint here is worn in the, in the legs. Like, it was like this in the package even before I opened it up. These little green spots have little black spots. And my other, my final negative thing is that, you know, I wish they would get a little more creative sometimes with these trap jaw figures. I understand that, I mean, this is the, the three accessories the original came with, so we got to have them. But at this point in time, it's like if you watch the original Masters of the Universe cartoon, trap jaw had many different hands. I wish we could get more hands. I wish they would give us, you know, like six or something, some other kind of offensive weapons or whatnot. Give me something. These are kind of like the Star Wars special editions of action figures, only these work and they don't suck. You know, you get to experience these old 80s toys, but reimagined with new articulation. Um, it's like the same thing over again, but also something brand new. And you know, I think it's cool that they, they're obviously trying to go for that original appeal of these figures. They didn't just try to reimagine these toys as like some kind of futuristic design like they kind of did with the 2000 X series. I do like that series a lot too. Look at this guy. Who couldn't love this 2000 X trap jaw? He's like super detailed. He looks like he'd eat the old trap jaw for breakfast. The only problem is he stands really stupid too. You have to bend him backwards like this in order to balance him. But you know, it's cool. Like there's a lot of you know, I don't know if you call it fan service or whatever, but they're doing a really good job of appealing to, you know, people like me who are old now and still like to collect these toys. And hopefully kids love to buy these toys too and play with them. I'd like to know how many people are actually buying these for their kids and how many people are actually buying them, you know, just for adults. Now, one thing I'm also curious about too is Pixel Dan is always talking about how you can like pop off all these arms and legs and stuff like that and like exchange them between guys. Like, is that just like an accident that like he found and kind of like, you know, just kind of started talking about? So now like Mattel's like, yeah, yeah, you were so you're supposed to pull these guys apart and put them together. Or is that like, is that what they really intended all along? Well, anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Up next, I'm going to do a scare glow review. I never had a scare glow before. I never knew about him growing up. But he's one of those figures that I always wanted after, you know, finding out about his existence. So, talk to you later.